If you are like a lot of other people, you can't run the latest high quality games on higher settings. Maybe you have a lower end PC, or maybe you just made the switch from consoles. Whatever your scenario, this video should help out. I'm Caleb Crisp, and today we're counting down my top picks for the 10 best games for inexpensive PCs. Coming in at number 10, we have Minecraft. While I don't personally enjoy playing this game anymore, and I don't really play it anymore, there was a short period of a few months where I really enjoyed it, and there is no denying its popularity or its appeal. You can build magnificent castles, houses, mansions, rockets, whatever you want to do. Of course, many people play for the mods, and those can be really fun. It is easily the most popular sandbox, and can easily be run on most machines with playable FPS. Next up, we have Left 4 Dead 2. Here is another game that I used to play for quite a bit, but don't really that much anymore. It goes on sale all the time for like $2, and I don't know a single person on Steam who doesn't own it. I definitely recommend it. I personally have around 30 to 40 hours in it, but others play it much more. This zombie shooting FPS is quite enjoyable. Number 8 goes to Gary's Mod. This game is like Minecraft, but on steroids. Rather than build castles and other architectural feats that you can't really move, why don't you use your real-life degree in aerospace engineering to build a rocket in the game, or maybe a computer, because you can actually do that. This is a true sandbox that allows you to import settings from other games to create your own. This is a game that is so open it almost qualifies as a game engine by itself. Many indie games even started off as a game on run it on lower end systems. At number 7, we have Rust. If you want a sandbox game that you can join and over time have a fortress to yourself and a small army of your friends that you use to attack others, then Rust is definitely for you. Reign of Kings is also an option, but I don't really play that game, not because I don't like medieval fighting and crap, I absolutely love that stuff, I just think that the game is kind of fell short and I'll maybe try it again once it gets out of alpha or beta or whatever it says. I've played this game off and on since release and have had a great time. They do frequently reset the servers because it's an alpha or beta, once again I forget which, but you can still have a great time with this game until you eventually lose yourself because of a server reset, which is infuriating. At number 6 we have Portal and Portal 2. I know some people are going to give me crap about not putting these games higher up, but let me present my argument. These games are absolutely wonderful until you beat them. They are seriously some of the best games you'll ever play. But I beat Portal 1 in under 3 hours. Portal 2 took a bit longer, but not as long as newer games. These games are incredibly fun, and they're on the list because you can run them on anything, and because they're really fun. But they don't offer near as much of hours of gameplay as other games. Yeah! Onward, brothers! To Everyone's favorite brutal medieval warfare game takes number 5. I'm gonna be honest, this game almost didn't make the cut. Not because it isn't fun, because it is, especially with your friends, and not because it doesn't have enough gameplay hours, because I personally have over 80, it's a great game. But because you do need some sort of dedicated graphics, or at least a higher level of an integrated one. This was not true at release, but this game has grown more demanding over the years. I'd say if you have at least a GTX 280, you should be fine. Or something that also gives around a gig of GDDR3 memory. Anyway, this game is good fun and I highly recommend it. Just hack through everybody and don't, don't forfeit. Warhammer 40,000, Dawn of War 2, and Dawn of War 2 Retribution take the cake for number 4. These games are phenomenal. Retribution is a DLC pack for Dawn of War 2, but the content that it offers is essentially an entirely new game. It's about $25 and it goes on sale fairly frequently. If that is out of your price range, then pick up the Dawn of War 2 Retribution The Last Standalone. Just type in The Last Standalone in Steam, it'll come up. It of course is a standalone pack that gives you the Last Stand game mode, where you and up to two friends play one of many characters from the Warhammer 40,000 universe, and try and survive against 20 waves of hordes of enemies on two different maps. That may sound like a few waves, but trust me, it's not. The last standalone is $5 and comes with all but two characters who are added as DLC later. While I personally think this is a bit overpriced, one, both DLC characters cost $10 a piece, they do go on sale quite frequently. In fact, just a few weeks ago they added the second one, which is surprising considering the age of the game, it was the Necron Overlord that they added. 
All of the characters feature wonderful dialogue, except for the Necron Overlord, because he doesn't say anything in the universe, he's kind of, like, you know, silent, and a unique playstyle. If you want an enjoyable RTS with a storyline, story story then the Dawn of War 2 primary game with the campaign is definitely for you. And it also comes with, I believe, half of the last standalone characters to play as. Uh, these all, like I said, these all go on sale frequently, so check Steam for when THQ titles are cheap. At number 3 we have Mountain Blade Warband, and no that is not Mountain Blade, though that is an achievement in the game. This is hands down one of the best games I have ever played. It has the best medieval combat system in a game that I have ever used. Seriously, chivalry would be 10 times better if its combat was like, it was like an upgraded version of Mountain Blades. It's a bit old and the graphics are a bit down, but that makes it great for people on lower NPCs, and I have a monster of a computer and it's still fantastic. It has a huge world with many characters and places to conquer. In this game you play as a man or woman, you build up an army of mercenaries, townsmen, and knights, and basically just try to take over the planet. It has primitive RTS-like gameplay and a big overworld map, and this RTS-like gameplay lets you control your men in the heat of battle real-time strategy. But while you are controlling your men, you also fight in first or third person, which is great. You can upgrade your individual units, get new weapons and everything, upgrade your characters, towns, oh sorry, armor as well, and of course yourself. This is a grand game that I highly recommend that you play, especially before the new one comes out this year, Mountain Blade 2, super excited, number one game I'm, game I'm looking forward to. Another thing to add, that this game can literally be run on pretty much anything. It's, it came out a while ago, it's a little bit outdated, but it's so much fun still. I just got it a few months ago. Counter-Strike Global Offensive is easily the best FPS out currently, and that is why it is number two. And yes, I remember Modern Warfare 2, that game is great for sentimental value, casual play, and occasionally picking up, and if they re-released it, I would absolutely buy it again for like uh, next-gen consoles and upgraded PCs. But that's pretty much all it's currently good for. Anyway, Counter-Strike is easily the most skill-based and most competitive FPS. From getting in the occasional weird glitch that has you flying oh, all over the map, go. and I have, I say that, it, that what happens very, very rarely. <laughs> to proving your superiority by killing the entire enemy team with a sniper rifle, or getting the last kill on arms race with a knife. This game is great for anyone who loves competitive gaming and can also be run on pretty much anything. It's always being updated and having new weapon skins added. Just watch out for hackers and enjoy. And the number one game that can be run on low-end PCs is League of Legends. Now I could go on for hours explaining League, but here's the gist of it. The game is number one on pretty much every list for PC gaming. League has tens of millions of monthly players and is the most popular video game in the world, and with good reason. I have over a thousand hours in League and have been playing since season three. It has over a hundred champions that can be played, with new ones coming out fairly frequently. Trust me, no matter what your playstyle is, there is a champion for you. While every now and then Riot releases an update that overpowers or nerfs a few champions, you can tell that this game has a lot of thought put into it, from the basic layout and animations of the map to complex champion skill shops and grouping techniques. This game is the best PC game, it is in my opinion the best MOVA, MOVA, MOBA. It has a steep learning curve, but once you understand the game, you won't be able to put it down. That combined with its low spec requir requirements, I can't talk today, requirements, make this game number one. And after quite a few hours of playing, a lot of avoidable deaths, a ton of minions, and a few kills, you will want to see some other great plays, and eventually you'll understand what in the world is going on here. And of course, after a while, you will understand that the best thing in the world is seeing this. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please do subscribe, leave a comment, and like the video. Toodaloo!